have your other piece of paper in your book there nearby because I'd love you to also be able to write a few things and not necessarily um, ruin the page you're going to hand in because like I said, if you didn't catch it before, this page that you've got in front of you, you will hand in at the end of this lesson. You'll see what you're going to use it for. Now, the kind of puzzle that I'm going to teach you about today, as the name, as the page suggests, is called a loop. Okay. Now, let me show you what a loop looks like. Um, you don't need to draw this, I just wanted to show you what it will mean. Um, a loop is, well let's just make one up, let's do something like this. Can you see that? Is that visible? Yep. So this would be a completed loop. As the name suggests, you have to have one line that goes all around, forms a loop, so there are no loose ends, uh, it never connects back to itself, it doesn't cross over, um, sorry, it doesn't cross over itself, it does connect back to itself. You have one loop, just one on the entire board, so this might be one, um, or you could have something like, whoops, let's delete the whole thing, that would be fine. Um, you could have something like this, that would still be a loop, you don't have to fill up every single thing. What you're trying to do is find what is the loop that fits the particular board that you've got. So now have a look over at this one in the top left hand corner, pick up your pen, and I'm going to show you how to complete a loop based on the clues that get given to you. So you've got these numbers, right? The number indicates, and this might be worth writing down at the top of your page, the number indicates how many lines are around that space. Let me say that again. The number indicates how many lines, I should say intervals actually, are around that particular space. So for example, see this spot right in the middle here, okay? You can see there's four spaces where you could connect the dots. There's four spaces where you could. Two of them are connected, so they might be here and here, or, or, or here and here, and two are not. Okay, so when we finish this loop, two of the lines will be joined, and two won't. Um, have a look at the zero in the top left. What does that tell you? There's no lines around that. Perfect, William. So in fact, that's going to be the first way I'm going to suggest that you start to help me solve this, right? Because I know, and we know together, there can't be any lines there, you might want to put some crosses there to indicate you're not allowed to go there. Um, going there would mean that you have lines around there, so it wouldn't fulfill the zero, okay? And once you've done that, you can start to look at the rest of the puzzle and the rest of the clues and piece it together. For example, let me use a different color here. I'm going to tell you right now, if this is true, then you can guarantee there will not be a line there. Now I wonder if anyone can work out why. Look carefully at what we've got. Can anyone suggest? Okay, here I'm going to hit pause on you because I think Rashawn's hand went up first. What do you think, Rashawn? Because if, if you have a line on the top, then you have to have a line on the left. Very good. So, and Yang, was that what you were thinking? Yeah. Similar lines? Yep. So just you don't have to put this in because obviously it's wrong. Suppose I did put a line there, right? Remember, it's a loop, so there are no loose ends, right? Have a look at the left-hand part of that. Where's it going to go? It, it can't go here, because we said you're not allowed. Uh, it can't go here either, so therefore you're kind of at a dead end. So that's how I know, let's just undo all that, you can't possibly go here. In the same way, you can't possibly go here, right? Now, let's have a think. Look in the top right-hand corner. There's a three over there. So it's going to look something like this, either like that, or like that, or like that or like that. Do you agree? It's got to be one of those because that's three lines, okay? Which do you think it will be? Are there any that we can like eliminate that they're impossible? You can't have that. Any? Yeah, what do you reckon? Bottom right one. Oh, hold on, just hit pause. Let me, let me name them. Let's call this one A, B, C, and D. Which one are you talking about? Um, D. D. So you cannot have D. Okay, why not? Um, then you would for it to actually become a loop, you would have to connect it on the left side as well. Ah. And that would mean there's four lines. Very good, that's right. And then also, if there were four lines, number one, it doesn't obey the three. Number two, what are you going to do all the rest over here? Remember I mentioned there's one loop that goes all the way through. If I went there, uh, it's closed, it's finished. Does that make sense? So, let me hit pause. We've already just said it can't be this one. I wonder if you can work out which one it should be. Let me give you 30 seconds to try and work it out yourself, and then we'll come together and have a thing. I'll give you a second to try and work it out. Put your hand up if you think you've worked out which one it is. I'll give you another 10 seconds. I want to see if everyone can get their hand up. Okay, Enoch, which one do you reckon it is A, B, or C? B? We reckon, who agrees with Enoch? 
Yeah, okay, so let's, let's all draw in what that should look like. So we, we think it looks like this. Can I ask, how did you work out that it had to be B, Vishaka? Because you can do 3 and then at the bottom it says 2, so you can add 2 more lines. Okay, so we can go further down here, that's good. Um, though I, I should point out, even though you can do something, that doesn't mean you have to. For example, can anyone tell me how did you get rid of A? A is an easy one to exclude, you know you can't be A, why not? Leah? Um, yeah, very good. Yeah, you, you, again, you have those dead ends that can't go anywhere. Okay, so once you've got that, um, as Vishaka suggested, you know you're going to have to go down probably. Otherwise, you have a dead end, and you can start to see how you fill in the rest of the puzzle. Okay, so can I give you a couple minutes? Try and do those first two. See if you can complete the loop. Um, check with someone else nearby if you think you've got both those answers. I'll give you a minute to do that, and then I'll show you what the grey ones are about. Okay, have a look. See? How confident are you that that's correct? Like a scale of 1 to 10. 1 being like, I just guessed. 10 being like, I don't know. 9. 9? You're very confident? You're not confident at all? Are you? you? Sorry, say it again. Tell me, tell me why. Ah, so this 3, tick. This 2, tick. This 2, this 2, this 3, all fine. But this 1 does have 2 lines on either side. So something's gone wrong. Got it? Well done. Look at it again carefully. Look at all the clues. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, so let's have a look. You've got the three, that's good. You've got the two, has two. Now this two in the middle, does it have two lines around it? Does it really? What about that one? But that's also attached to this, right? So there's three lines around this one, yeah? You see that? Does that make sense? Now yours is closer because I noticed you've got the three, you've got the two, you've got that two, you've got this two. But uh, there's a couple of issues here, aren't there? Look at that one and that one. What's happened? Yeah, so you're close, you're close, you're closer than this, but that you're both you're both having trouble. Let's have a think. I think we did it sooner. Better? Yeah. Hmm. I see you've made some adjustments to my numbers. And I was meant to move this one down. <laughs> Can you do it with the numbers that are there? Why don't you start with this one? It's fresh. Do this one. It would work. What do you got? Ah, nicely done. So, are you confident that they're all perfect? Yes. Okay, good. Now, I've got a question for both of you. I'm going to tell everyone in a minute, but you notice that the two grey ones, they're very similar. Very, very similar. But there's a tick on one and a cross on the other. I want you to see if you can work out what the tick and the cross mean. Well, I want you to have a think about it. Have a think. It means something a little more than that. Well done. Good. You got it? You know it? Can I see? Does it fit? I think, yeah, yeah, we did it. You can go through every number and you can check, right? Zero, yes, one, yes. Nice enough. Do the second one. I'm not going to tell you where to start on that one. Ah, very good. Okay, okay. So, um, can I ask for everyone's attention again, please? Sorry. Um, spoilers, I'm going to show you the answer now. You're going to get an L shape like this. It's actually a backwards L shape. Um, so this is the shape you should have gotten. This is the loop. Okay. Now, some of you are quite close. You might have gotten, for example, a common one I saw, a common mistake I saw looks something like this, I think. Um, quite a few people had got this one. Can someone tell me, because it's very close to being right. Like, for example, that two looks good, that two looks good, that three looks good, lots of it's right. What's the issue? Adidia, what do you think? Yeah, this one here, have a look at how many lines are around it, how many lines are around it. <laughs> two, and in fact, it's the same with this guy, right? So that's how you can know, this is very important, maybe write this down at the top for me, I ran out of space. Loops are unique. Can you write that for me? Loops are unique. So when you have a look at the clues, there is only one loop that actually fits all of them, and that's a very important piece of information. Um, I think from memory, what's this one? I actually can't, I think there's a line straight up and down, I think. 
then I'm wondering, oh, can someone help me out? This, does this go to the, does it go this way? Yeah. And down like that? Oh, that's right. It's like this one, isn't it? Did I remember it right? I'm just doing it off the top of my head. Yes? Okay, wonderful. All right. Now, here's where it gets really interesting. That was just the warm-up. Solving loops is actually very easy. It's when you are making loops that things get much more fascinating. So have a look at these two gray ones, okay? Now, what do you notice? What's the first thing that you notice that's different? Let's just look at the first one. What's different about this one compared to the two <laughs> loops above? What do you see that's different? Um, yeah, Anush. There are fewer clues, right? I've taken away three numbers, okay? Now, my question to you is, can we still solve it? The answer is we can, right? Let's just start to do it together. Um, for example, if you haven't already worked out, zeros are a nice place to start because they give you certainty, right? So I'm quickly going to put in a few spots I know I can't go. Like that, okay? Because you have those um, zeros, those x's that are close to the threes, that also tells you a lot of information, right? What are you going to have over here? How would you describe it? It's kind of like a, it's like a C, right? A C facing that way. So you know you're going to have this over here. Um, you also know you're going to have a, um, it's like an N on the top. Does that make sense? Like so, okay. Um, where's that one going to go? Where does it have to go? It has to go to the right, okay. Now, at that point, can I go up? No. I can't because then I'd have a dead end. So you've got to go down. And fairly quickly you'll realize, oh, all right, this is the only way that you can finish. Are you content with that? Does it fit? All the clues you've got? Yeah. Now, ah, now this is, this is interesting, right? There's a tick here because this is unique. Remember I said loops are unique. Have a look down at this one. It's almost identical. What's the difference? Yeah, I've just removed that too. Do you see that? Now we can start off the way that we did before. So I'm going to put all those X's there, right? I'm going to put this, uh, this C that you suggested over here and this guy up here. Um, that has to go there. That has to go there. But now, now things are different, right? Because unlike in the previous situation, there's actually more than one way to complete this loop. Do you agree? Um, I could definitely do it the way I did before. Like, I could just do that. Can someone tell me a different way to do this one? Louise? You could make it like a plus. So um, where you ended it, on the right side, Yep. Um, you go to the left, mm -hmm. and then you go downwards, yep. left, and up. Left and up. Very good. Does this fit all my clues? Yeah. Yeah. It does, right? Now what this means is because I could do this or I could have done the previous solution, which looks like this, this loop is not unique. Does that make sense? So you actually can't solve this one. You can't know, like, is it this one or is it that one? Okay. So now here's the real task we're actually going to do today. And it's a fun open task because there's an infinite number of solutions, okay? You're going to use um, those blank spots over on the right to make your own loops, to design your own loops. And here are the questions I want to ask of you and the loops that you create. Can you remove any clue, remove any number, and still leave the loop solvable? So there's only a single unique solution. Can you get rid of any two clues? Can you get rid of any three? Does it matter which clue you remove? Um, what's the smallest number of clues, a minimum number? Can you solve a loop of this size if you only get like two clues or three? Is that possible? Okay. So, and can you build a loop that requires exactly four clues to solve? So this piece of paper is going to have your loops on it that you submit to me. It'll just have the numbers because then um, we can work out. Don't give us the answers. But use your book because you might, well, the first few times I did it, I got it wrong a bunch of times as you explore and as you have a play. Okay? So here's the task. This is what you'll submit to us at the end of the lesson. Have a play in your own books. Make some dots. You can make them all this size. Um, this is a nice medium size. If you make it smaller, it's quite boring. If you make it bigger, it gets really hard. Have a go, see how far you can get. All right, off you go.